what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, and I have Chandler Chandler Bolt of Self Publishing School. I'm going to introduce him formally in a second, but Chandler, I always love to talk about other episodes people should check out. And since we are going to be talking about Published, the book, if you're watching the video, you can see it right here, his book, The Proven Path from Blank Page to 10,000 Copies Sold, more importantly, just helping, you know, fuel his business, right? Doesn't necessarily matter matter about how many you sell. I know he gives away a lot of copies and he's going to actually, um, I'll mention that in the front. Um, I'll get to it in a second, but I might as well just say it. If you go to publishbook.com slash Jeremy, he's generous. He just told me he's going to go free. He's going to ship you a free copy of the book, only 50. So the first 50 people, you can go to publishbook.com slash Jeremy and get that super generous of him. And I always liked past episodes, you know, obviously Chandler, I looked at who are the other authors I've had on podcasts? Because books help fuel businesses for a lot of people. So I've had Dory Clark, a uh, few of, she's written several books, um, including Stand Out. I know Chandler's had her on the podcast. I had Never Split the Difference. Uh, Chris Voss, never split, amazing book, love that book. And it gives you an excuse to talk to the author and really go deeper. Uh, a mutual friend, you know, John Rulin, Giftology, great yeah. book. Um, I know he was also on the podcast and Chandler knows uh, John Perry Marshall, Evolution 2.0, just so many. I mean, I could go on and on, but amazing episodes. Check them out at inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. And at Rise 25, we help you give to and connect to your dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, Chandler, and I know this is how you serve people in your life too. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. I found no better way to do that over the past over decade of podcasting to have them on my show, shout from the rooftops what they're doing, what they're working on, their thought leadership. And so if you've thought about podcasting, you should. Uh, if you have questions, go to rise25.com. You can email us. Uh, both John, my business partner, and I have been doing it for over a decade, and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. So check it out. Um, Chandler Bolt without further ado, is CEO of Self-Publishing School and selfpublishing.com. And he's Forbes 30 Under 30 and the author of six best-selling books, including his book title, like I just said, Publish, as you can see here. Uh, and Self-Publishing School is an Inc. 5,000 company. The last three years in a row is ranked one of the 50, you know, 5,000 fastest growing private companies in the US. And he also hosts a podcast, two podcasts, the Seven Figure Principles Podcast and the Self-Publishing School Podcast. Chandler, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, good to be here. Thank you so much for having you me. You get to talk the rest of the time. <laughs> okay. Um, so first of all, you know, you are an amazing person with relationships and I got an amazing box from you in the mail, uh, just so nicely done, so nicely packaged and um, just a, a lesson in relationships, direct response, marketing, sales, everything. So I, I want you to, my wife wouldn't let me keep it around the house. She's like, what is this? Like, just get rid of clutter. So I wanted to keep it, but um, like the box, because it's, it's not just a box you've branded it. So I'd love for you to show what you sent out and, and talk about some of the thought process that went on out behind this box and what was in it. Yeah. So if you're watching on the video version right now, you can see the box and it, and it says published books, books change lives. This is a big kind of core value. It's also the title of the first chapter in the book. Um, and then you've got the actual copy of the book in there. Um, and then I don't have all the contents because I got like the pre-packaged before we had all the contents. Uh, but then there's a box looks like this. Uh, it says for best results, read the book when you open the box and with a winky face. And so kind of like a funny thing. And then That's I have your a letter. personality. You put your personality in everything. <laughs> a little, a little yeah. personality in it. Yeah. And then there's a letter, um, which that's the main piece. And, and it was uh, the letter is kind of branded. It's a picture of me with the book. That's like kind of, again, some personality. And uh, but then it, it, it just says, hey. It, it, so I, I believe, you know, this is one of the strategies that I talk about in the book, right? With the traditional, what I call the traditional launch is sending influencer boxes. But so many people have gotten books and it's just literally just a book. 
And I'm like, okay, I guess. Like, what is this? Why why did they send it to me? I'm assuming they're gonna hit me up at some point um, to do some sort of promotion. So <laughs> I, I just I just wanted to make be different from that. And so it was it, I think there were two things in that letter that mattered. One was why this book matters to them. And so it was, hey, if you're thinking about writing a book, jump to chapter four. If you've written a book and you're trying to figure out how to launch it, jump to chapter, I think it was 12. And then if you want to use a book to grow your business, jump to chapter 25. And so very much a reason why I should at least look at one part of this book. And so getting them to actually open it, which is the hardest thing to do in this instance, especially when you're sending it to you know very successful people who get sent a ton of books. Uh, but then it was being very clear that like, hey, there is no obligation along with this book. Like you don't have to support it at all. I'm sending you this because I think you might like it. But if you do want to support, here's two or three ways. And it was very specific, kind of like, hey, number one, take a picture with the book, post it and tag me. Like that's the easiest thing. And you know what? Some people would do do that. Yeah. Some people do that any, you know, would do it, but they don't think to do it. Right. So the fact that you just spell it out like, oh, you know, oh, I should take a picture and post it. Right. And so you just, anyway, keep going. So number one, number two was number two. Yeah. So that was number one. And then number two um, was uh, if you, if you have a podcast, I'd love, love to be on it, love to do an interview. Um, And then number three was I'd be happy to give away um, some copies of the book for free to your audience. So whether you have a podcast or not, maybe that's a fit. And so that's kind of the, and, and so then I made an easy call to action where I said, Hey, here's my phone number um, and my email and just text number one, number two, or number three, or I've got something else in mind. Yeah. Um, an easy so just call like kind action. of being very clear yeah. with that. An easy call to action, you know, love it. I mean, we first met, I don't know if you remember, we first met at Brian Kurtz's um, Titans event. So we first met at Brian Kurtz's Titans event. Okay. I don't know if you remember this. Um, I mean, you're still young, but at that time you're younger and just, you could tell go getter hustler. You're there, you know, you got your, you basically said, I'm going to help out. Let me go to this thing. And, um, just a student of direct response. Yes, that was a, so my early hustle was, um, I think, gosh, I must've been probably 21 years old at the time, maybe 22. Um, but early on it was, so I dropped out of school. Um, to start a company. And and I said, Hey, I'm going to drop out of school, but I'm going to operate like I'm still in it with the way that I approach my learning. And so instead of, uh, instead of class, I'm going to read books. I'm going to go to conferences. I'm going to take online courses, like all that stuff. And kind of convince my mom to, to, to take some of the money that was set aside for college and like redirect it towards some of that stuff. I mean, you know, the only, only for so many and all that only went so far. And so then beyond that, I said, all right, there's these amazing conferences that I want to go to, but I can't afford them. How do I get in the room? And so that was when I like Titans of Direct Response. I was learning copywriting. I was handwriting a, a copy for an hour a day and just like really diving into that. And I saw this event and I was thinking, man, this looks incredible. I don't have the money to go. <laughs> and so I, uh, I messaged I found a way to get in touch with Brian. And, and then that was kind of my pitch is I did the same thing with mastermind talks. Um, and I said, Hey, I, you know, I'd love to go. Um, can't currently afford it, but I tell you what, like, are you looking for volunteers? I'll do anything. I'll sweep the floors. I'll run the mics. I'll pick speakers up from the airport. Like whatever would make this easier, better, smoother experience for you. I'm there. Um, I just want to be in the room. Um, so let me know. And uh, he said, yeah, let's do Brian's it. Brian's just the nicest <laughs> kindest person on the planet so i can't imagine him oh he's awesome and and that was that would but that was it's so crazy how that was the start of so many relationships you um ryan levesque um gosh there's a bajillion people that i can't even think of off the top oh perry marshall um who you mentioned earlier just like so many different people and and but it was all and and i mean i worked my butt off um, at that conference, but it was, I, you, I, you probably remember me like sprinting the mic in the conference room and <laughs> doing books. And then I got, you know, there, there were those these binders. Books. I mean, he <laughs> probably gave everyone 50 pounds of binders. Yeah. And I think you were like lift, they were like huge. I still have those things, you know, all the, you know, basically, you know, sales letters that converted hundreds of millions of dollars in those binders. Yeah. but. 
you I'm like, oh, my God, you were like lifting them, lugging them around. It was crazy behind the scenes. And 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 what was an interesting I learned from that um, a lot of different things, but one of which was it, it was almost like because I was volunteering, like people viewed me as like the right hand guy of Brian. <laughs> it's like uh, not justly. I mean, I wasn't, but it was just like, oh, you're with Brian and you're helping you're running the mics. No, so, so just the proximity is instantly you're actually elevated above every other conference attendee in some way. Cause it's like, Oh, you're with the guy who's running this. Um, and so it just was, it just segued for so many relationships and including the relationship with Brian is, I mean, he's just an amazing person. And, and, and then that led to a lot of relationships, a lot of learning um, that really kickstarted a lot of early things yeah. for self-publishing school. I want to talk, and we're going to talk And for anyone who's listening to this, we're going to get into the crux of what, do you do when you're publishing a book and then more, you know, in beyond um, what does the, how do you grow your business with the book? And we're going to get into that, but on that topic of lessons learned um, you, you have colleagues, mentors. Um, I love for you to mention a few lessons learned. I know one of them is Michael Hyatt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Michael Hyatt. I mean, he's a guy that I've learned just um, the whole wheel of life, right? He has a concept he calls double win. And so now he's an advisor for self-publishing school and a mentor for me personally. But I mean, he's the C he was the CEO of uh, the seventh largest publishing company in the world or the seventh most profitable, profitable publishing company in the world. So I've learned a lot from him on the book side of things and how he does books and how he does all that. But also how do you build a business and a life where your business is successful? You have a thriving marriage, you have kids that still love you and uh, you know, you haven't been divorced five times and and all that stuff, but like truly a full wheel of life. So he's a guy that I've learned a lot of that stuff from and and continue to to learn from. I just had a coaching call with him this morning. <laughs> um, so continue to learn and and, and it, it just speak life in, in it for me. So with Michael and anyone, you're you're really good at um, reaching out and, um, you know, Michael's a busy guy, right? What was your approach to reaching out? He's like, he probably gets lots of inquiries of like, Hey, Mm -hmm. I want you to help me advise me, mentor me, whatever. What was your approach with Michael? That's a great question. So my philosophy, I mean, very similar to yours, Jeremy, I think you're exceptional with this Um, relationship building, adding value, um, all those things. Um, So it's it's very similar, I think, to your approach. Um, A couple of things that I did, I would say is, um, I mean, add value first. Um, and find ways to add value to that person. But then the big one for me is I like to become people's most uh, successful student. Um, and so whereas I think in today's society and for a lot of people, they want to learn stuff and then never credit the person that they learned it from. And then mm-hmm. just like somehow like, oh, I just created this and and I'm self-made. I think self-made is a farce. No one's self-made. <laughs> um, there, there's, there's sure you may have, you may have blazed that trail, but you had a lot of people that helped you along the way. And so for me, I want to become people's most successful student and then just continually shout them out and point back to them and say, oh yeah, if it wasn't for Michael Hyatt, I'd never be doing any of this. And, and so I, I you know, people who pay, pay attention and people who get paid pay <laughs> by you pay attention. <laughs> and so I said, Hey, how can I, the opportunity I'd been for years, it was kind of like my master plan was like, Hey, that's the guy I want to mentor me. And so finally it, it was like, Oh, he's got this business accelerator thing. That sounds interesting that they're launching. I'm going to join that. And then, and then, okay, let me like his daughter and and him are fans of my brother's band need to breathe. So like, okay, let me do, let me like make an intro there and like try to see if I can send him to a concert or something. And, and just like little things like that. And then, and then doing well and saying, hey, I'll be a testimonial. And then when the timing was right, when he was kind of stepping out of the CEO role and um, turning that over um, to his daughter and he was kind of moving into a chairman of the board type role, I said, hey, man, it sounds like you're about to have some time on your hands. <laughs> and I, I, I got breakfast with him. And I said, hey, here's, here's how this will make, you know, make this a win for you. And, and I think this will really be a big part of your legacy is I'm going to carry that on and, and you can use what you've learned in the publishing world and teach me that because that's what we're doing. That's what we're yeah. building. And so just like casting the vision and, and he said, yeah, this sounds awesome. Let's do it. I don't <laughs> think channel I've heard anyone put it like that, which is be someone's most successful student, you know, um, a hundred percent, you know, um, and add as much value as humanly possible to someone and ask nothing in return. And the opportunity will come if there is an opportunity, 
to do stuff together. Right. And yes. Um, yeah, that could be a book, a t-shirt, be someone's most successful. So that's, that's, I love that. Um, there's another one, um, uh, Pete Vargas. Mm -hmm. What's the lesson you learned from Pete? I mean, how to speak on stages in a way that grows my business. Um, and so, so funny, such a perfect segue is uh, that was a similar thing is, um, I want to be, you know, Pete's most successful student. And so Pete shouts me out from stage all the time. And it's, I mean, it's reciprocity too. Like I was one of Pete's first people that promoted him and promoted him to my audience. And like, that was a big kickstart for his business, but I wouldn't be speaking on stages if I didn't learn that from him. And so he taught me that I said, Hey, let's go, let's go implement in 2018, which was the first year we started speaking. Um, uh, uh, first year I started speaking, um, we did a million dollars, um, in revenue from speaking at events and it was just following the playbook. Um, that Pete taught us and then just shouting out him. And then now I think that's a, that's a blurb. And like, he went on Grant Cardone stage and like, I'm getting all these pictures and all these different big events that he's spoken at. It's like my, I'm like, Hey, we just, it's the last day of 2018. And we literally just passed a million dollars from speaking this year. Wouldn't have been able to do this without Pete, like all that stuff. And so that's just been a catalyst. And he's been yeah. able to introduce me to a bunch of amazing people and, you know, my business wouldn't be what it is if, without learning the speaking piece from him. But then with also without uh, just, I mean, being in, you've probably seen this too. It's like, you see, you see how people, how they operate and how they grow. And it's just inspiring and it inspires you to level up. Uh, and that's Pete for me. You know, if you get nothing else out of this, obviously one of the take homes is you should have a book, but uh, the other one is be someone's six, you know, most successful student. Think of who in your universe that that's, you know, choose the whatever qualities that is um, on that topic. And, and I want to talk about Chandler. There's a lot I like to book it. There's one thing I did not like about the book. I'm going to ask you about that. Um, and uh, but before we get to that, um, <laughs> you got to open a loop for a what second. An but, open loop, um, um, but you're most successful. Some of your successful students. Right. And um, uh, talk about Alexis. And Justin. Yeah, so Alexis and Justin Black, I think it's an amazing story. Um, and this is for people who want to write a book about their personal life experience. And, and so I think, you know, Alexis and Justin, they did that. They grew up in the foster adopt uh, kind of community and world. And they, they wrote this, it's a memoir called Redefining Normal. And it has just become a rally cry for a lot of folks in the foster adopt community. It's, it's unbelievable. And for, for anyone who's written a memoir, um, you know how hard, like it's hard to sell copies of the memoir if you're not famous, right? I mean, and they have done an unbelievable job. They've, they've sold at least 10,000 books over the last um, few months or I think a year or so. It's led to speaking gigs. It's led to a business. It's led to like all of those things. So I think that's a great example as a book, as a starting point um, to launch a business, to grow your impact and income and all that stuff. What should they, if someone wants to check it out, do they just Google Alexis and Justin Black and they'll find yeah. it? Yeah, and redefining normal. Okay. Um, you can check it out on uh, on Amazon or anywhere that the books are sold. Cool. And then, because you talk about in the book, um, publish different types of books. I mean, it's it's not just business book. When I think of it, I think of business book. But um, Emma, talk about Emma. Yeah. So she's in the gosh, she's on like page fifteen or something. So. Her dad joined self-publishing school years ago. He's a physical therapist, wrote multiple books. Um, and then she said, hey, dad, I want to do that. And he said, all right, go write 50 words and come back to me thinking that'll be enough of a deterrent. Right. Um, and she comes back and she, you know, a few hours later, she's done it. And so sure enough, um, I think they went to Panera Bread every single Saturday for um, for a period of time. And she wrote and published a book called it's a children's book called The Fairies of Waterfall Island. Um, it, it sold so well. Um, I mean, she, she, I think the book made $4,000 in the first three months. She started getting asked to speak at, at, at her school and at local schools. So I think her first speaking gig, she made like 1200 bucks. Listen, and it was a, to like a, a kid who's days. that young, you make a thousand dollars. You're like, like oh, you it's know. changed the trajectory of her life. If you think like as a young woman, her confidence, the skill sets that she's learned, the opportunities, I mean, now she's paying for school field trips um, through her book royalty. She's got a quote unquote allowance, which is really just the royalties that come in every month um, from her book. 
Uh, and so it's so cool just setting her setting her up. But I mean, she did the work and she donated a ton of money to an autism awareness charity as part of the launch, like because she has a friend that has autism. And so it's just like such a cool story all around. And that's where what is the books book called again, lives, Chandler? right? Like, yeah. I believe that books change lives and and whether you're an adult and it's, hey, I want it to change my life or my business or whether you're a kid and it just changes the trajectory of your life altogether. What was the book called again? It's called The Fairies of Waterfall Island. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit, and we're, I want to talk about one other uh, example, but tell, talk to people about what's the process. So let's yeah. say an entrepreneur is listening, a founder is listening, like, oh my God, like, I want my kid to do that. That sounds amazing. I want to teach them. Um, do they go through the videos of the course? Like, you know, where do they start? And then kind of how does it work uh, to go through it? Like, if it's them or, their child. Yeah. And so, I mean, the first step, like, um, if, if, if you're, if we're talking about self-publishing school is like the first step, a lot of people take is they book a call with my team. They'll chat about their goals, their, their challenges, put together a roadmap and a plan, all that good stuff. Um, so you can, if, if that's something you're interested in, you can go to self publishing school.com forward slash apply, um, book a call with the team. We can, we can lay, lay out a roadmap, but then once you get started, we're all about helping people work through the eight milestones, right? And so if you're watching the video version, you can see this, this is in the book. I guess this is chapter or uh, page 55 here, but there's, there's eight milestones on your journey. So there's the first four are what I call the more writing method. So that's mind mapping the book, turning that mind map into an outline, writing the rough draft, and then editing, right? So M-O-R-E, mind map, outline, rough draft, editing. And don't uh, and skip got, the mind map. And he taught, he gives a big case in the book for, I, th I think you, you once like, oh, I don't need the mind mapping part. And then you're like, oh, this did not work. So yes, there's a certain reason there's an order to this. And, you know, someone who's published thousands, tens of thousands to help people do this. Just look at the process. Don't try and reinvent yeah. it. Right. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And that would be like, for anyone listening to this, I would encourage you as soon as you're done listening to this episode grab a blank sheet of paper, put your topic in the middle of the page, set a timer for 15 minutes and mind map everything that you can think of on that topic. So don't skip this step. Have, yeah. Do not skip this step. It's, it's, it's tempting to just say, Oh, I'm just going to start writing. Um, but it'll be unbelievably inefficient if you skip this step. So think stories that you have lessons that you've learned. If you're a business owner, what are the broken record conversations that you keep having over and over and over again? Um, with, with, with prospects or um, all that stuff. And so that would be the big thing um, for, for me is, is, or for, for, I think for the listeners is, is um, start with a mind map. Yeah. And you can get, you know, like if you're the first 50 people go to publishbook.com slash Jeremy and get the book and actually, you know, read it. Um, so, okay. So you book a call with a team, you kind of think of these steps, what's next. So yeah. someone has a son, daughter, like, yes, Chandler, yeah. I want, the next Emma. I want to be to have them be the, your most successful student. Yeah. So the, the, for us, is um, the milestones are at the front of everything that we do, and then we've got a bunch of resources that support that. So for a lot of people, it starts with what we call the clarity call. Like that's the first call after you've signed up with it's with one of our coaches, and they'll walk you through like, hey, what's your what's your avatar that you're writing to? What's the book about? How do you? What's the plan? Like, let's map this out. And then we've got curriculum that, that, that people go through. We've got a series of workshops, like we've got the Write Your Book Workshop. We've got, you know, just like, basically it's just a ton of resources and templates and all this. Our goal is to save people hundreds of hours in the process, to save people hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the process, and to help them actually finish and publish a quality book that sells more copies. And so there's, there's the curriculum that does that. There's the one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's group coaching workshops, like kind of all that that goes through it. Um, but it's, it's all about really for us is how do we help people take the very next step? <laughs> and so the very next step might be from this podcast might be creating your mind map, right? And then once you've got your mind map, the very next step is turning that into an outline. And so each of those milestones, it's okay. Not how do we do everything, but how do we just help people take the very next step? Because if we keep doing that, um, then they're going to, they're going to get this book done and published faster than they thought they could. Yeah. It reminds me of Joe Sugarman's book um, about copywriting, which is, uh, it's one of my favorite books on copywriting because he's like, 
what's the point of the headline to get the subhead? What's the point of the yes. subhead to get the first sentence? Yes. What's the second, first sentence, second sentence? And you kind of take in the same approach with, with writing a book. The slippery slide. I love that. Uh, I'm scrambling right now to try and find it in the book. Um, but I literally, I literally talk about that in the book. It's the slippery slide. And, that, and I talk about it within the context of um, what's, the, um, what's the purpose of the title? When you've got a title of your book, it's to get them to read the subtitle. Um, what's the purpose of the subtitle? It's to get them to open the book or you know read the book description of the first chapter. And then what's the pur- purpose of that? Like is to get them to keep reading, right? And so that's the slippery slide or the slippery slope mm-hmm. um, concept. I think it's just, it's unbelievably important. Love it. <laughs> um, with, with copywriting, but also with how you kind of structure your book. So let's continue on with this because I want to keep, I want to talk about how do you use the book to grow your business, right? Yes. But um, so we have mind mapping, outlining, rough draft, self-editing, professional editing, because there's, and you, you go in detail in the book about the different types of editor editors, and you go in detail about the process too. After yes. that would be um, the cover design. And then after yep. that would be the formatting, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so how, are there steps in between there, like with the formatting, is it there's certain pages or format on the page? How does what am I missing in this outline if we went a little bit more granular? Yeah. So if we're going specifically into formatting, right. Cause you know, we, you, you talked about, we've got self-editing, which is making the book better yourself. Then it's all right, professional editing. Like let's bring in a professional. Then you've got cover design, which is all right. You're a good cover needs to grab attention. It needs to be easy to read and you need to instantly understand what the book's about. Right. So a good, good cover includes a good title <laughs> um, and a good title and subtitle where, prospects or potential readers instantly understand what the book's about. But then to jump into what you're asking about is on the formatting side of things. I look at that kind of in two ways, which is how do we make this an amazing reader or listener experience? Um, And then how do we format this in a way that is going to take people from reader or listener um, to subscriber and customer? And so those kind of like the dual purpose of that. And so how do we make it a, a, a great experience um, both for the reader and for the listener. Yeah. And, the, and then there's a bunch of, you know, minutia kind of within that of like, you know, your margins and your, your headings and your type and your, the cover and the, the or sorry, there's like the size of your book, like all those things that are a little bit more boring, but that do matter um, when it comes to creating a great book that truly helps people. Yeah. I mean, you do a good job in the book. I'm, I'm looking at uh, page 177, but you can see it's not just written words. There's pictures. Yeah. You could see there's a stool and you could see, you know, email list, outgoing, outgoing promotions and an author brand. And so or ongoing promotions. And you could see like it breaks up. It allows me to not have to read. <laughs> I remember when I was looking at Elon Musk's book, um, it had a picture of him. I think it was as a kid or something. And mm-hmm. some copywriters talk about this. What do you always read with the picture? You read the little description in the picture, like you, it make you read it. Right. And so yeah. I was like, Oh my God, having pictures with like the description people, I, I bit through a whole book. Okay. Yeah. I listened to it on audible. So I didn't read the book, but I had it, but I, yeah. I looked at every picture in the book and read the little, uh, little caption, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Part of the format. Scan. Well, and that's the goal for me, Jeremy is, is, you know, I mentioned I'm a C-level English student and a college dropout with ADHD, like uh, the last person you think to write a book. But that's why I think it's in, those things, I think, help me write great books, uh, because for me, I, I want it to be ADHD friendly. Right? And so it's like, <laughs> hey, I can just skim and I can look at the pictures and, and, and or if I'm fully reading it. And, you know, this from copywriting, right? They call it the dual readership path. And so it's how do I make sure that this is valuable for the person that's going to read every word? And help them read every word by breaking it up with images yeah. and make it fun. But then how do I also make this valuable for people who are more just going to skim it yeah. um, and, and help those folks as well? So that's the goal. I think you create a new certification. Like, you know, you in food, it's like GMO free or vegan. Yours is the <laughs> ADHD friendly certification. Yes. So like yes. ADHD friendly certified self-publishing. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk about Hayden. Hayden Crabtree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Hayden, he, uh, so he's a student of, of self-publishing school. Um, and, uh, he, so he wrote a book called skip the flip. 
Um, and this is just a great example of using a book to grow your business. I mean, he's a real estate investor. Um, he does a lot of real estate investing, but then also has started building out a fund. And I think even a software company now at this point. Um, but it, it, he wrote a book called Skip the Flip. It did unbelievably well, followed the process. It's got 600 and something reviews on Amazon. That helped him land on the Bigger Pocket show, um, which led to a lot of yeah. other business. And then kind of full circle, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit more into real estate and I read his book and it just totally changed. I mean, books change lives, right? And it's totally changed my perspective on real estate investing. And now it's helping me um, with, with how I'm looking at investing in real estate and all that stuff. So just like kind of a cool example of a, of a, of a, I call it, it's like a book is like this key that opens the door to Narnia, you know, like Chronicles of Narnia. And, and, and it's this magical world of opportunities that only exists for authors. Um, kind of like they discovered the magical world of Narnia. Well, the book is the key that opens the door to those opportunities first. So for him, that was the bigger pockets podcast that was leading to a fund investors read the book and then give him money <laughs> um, and, 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 or, you know, join his coaching program, like all those things. And so it's just great, a uh, great example of using a book to grow your business. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk about that, which is um, part of chapter 25, but I did have Joshua Dorkin on a bigger pocket and fun fact is he was in a Saturday Night live skit with Jerry Seinfeld. And I think I have a clip on that episode of him actually, uh, if, if YouTube didn't take it down, but, um, the grow your business part. So talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah. So I look at, um, how to use a book to do three things, how to use a book to get more leads, to get more, uh, sales and to get more referrals. And so getting more leads, it's these are people who hear about me because of my book, right? So if you think about so many people who read Russell Brunson's books, never would have known about ClickFunnels, but they found out about his book, read his book, and then now they know ClickFunnels and all that stuff, right? So these are people who hear about me because of my book. And then sales, it's how do I get more people who know about me to do business with me? And that's where I look at using a book in any or every part of your sales conversion funnel right? To, it'll boost your conversion rate across the board, right? It, it, it'll build authority. You know, the root word of authority is author. You can't spell the word authority without the word author. Um, so it builds you up as an authority, which helps your close rate. It helps your conversion. But if you look at the whole funnel, right, you got traffic that probably leads to a lead, which maybe leads to an appointment, which maybe leads to someone showing up, which maybe leads to someone, you know, purchasing or not purchasing. Every part of that process can can get more efficient and more effective by adding a book. Um, and, and hey, you can use it to capture more leads. You can use it to get, actually get people to show up to an appointment or to a webinar. You can, and if they read the book as part of that process, you're now the obvious choice. And so that's the sales piece. And then the referrals. It's a huge is, differentiation. Yes, it's a big time differentiator. I mean, a book is the new business card, right? As a lot of people say, and, and, and it's... And, if you give someone a business card, they're probably going to throw it away within 24 hours. <laughs> um, but if you give them a book, they're going to keep it. And then every time they see it, they're going to think of you. Right. And that even leads to the, the third point, which is how do you turn your customers into referrers or even prospects? And so my recommendation is give two copies of your book to every new customer and you say, hey, here's one for you. And here's one for a friend who needs help with X, Y, Z. Right? And, and so could you give them a copy of this book? And they will. And then now all of a sudden, you're, it's te teaching the methodology and it's bringing back referrers and so uh, referrals. And so you're turning customers uh, into active referrers. I want to talk about year long because people probably like, oh, I'm just going to do this for like a couple of weeks, a couple of months, because yeah. it's so it's it's a process to get the book out there. You're probably like a little bit tired. You're like, OK, let's just I, I kind of picture it. If I have like an exam, I've been studying so hard. I just want to get the thing over with. Right. Yeah. And that's, this is when the journey begins. Right. <laughs> so a yeah. year, even John Rulin talks about five year plan to getting it out there and keeping it, keeping it, uh, fueling the fire, I guess. Um, yes. so talk about what people should be thinking about in that year plan. Yeah. So, and by the way, March. Chandler, you have so many good merch ideas. Like you should, I don't know if you have a t-shirt, like you can't spell author without authority or be someone's best student. Like there's so many merch options. <laughs> I would buy like a t-shirt or mug with this stuff on it. Um, oh, so self-publishing school merch. Um, <laughs> it started, you heard it here first. 
so year long process. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I call this the one year launch. Um, and so it, it's, it's a mindset and, and it's a, it's a process. And so really the mindset piece is, um, I, I talk about the Toyota Camry versus the Lamborghini launch. And so the Lamborghini launch, that's what most people do, right? They, they, they focus all their efforts on a singular week. And if you know anything about Lamborghinis, they use up a lot of fuel, they're loud and shoo, they're gone in a flash, right? And that's the way most people look at their book launch. Uh, but what I, what I would advocate for instead is the Toyota Camry approach. So how do I create a book that can, and assets that continue to sell? So it's, it's a mindset to continue to promote my book after the launch. And then it's, it's moving from one-off promotions to evergreen marketing assets, right? So it's the difference between a promotion and marketing or, or, or creating marketing assets. And that's really what it's all about. So just like this podcast interview is, is, is will become an evergreen marketing asset, totally. right? It's ones it I did in. nine years ago. People are still <laughs> looking at listening to yes. spreading the word on. Yeah, totally. Not so as popular it, it, so as the self-publishing school channel. Books. But Say that again, I said not as popular as the self-publishing school channel, but but still, I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so creating evergreen assets and continuing to sell the book beyond the launch, which is so important. You know, speaking of, I mean, the self-publishing school podcast, it's it, it, it interview the most successful authors on the planet. And that is the commonality, right, is all of those folks. It's like, hey, how was your book so successful? Well, I continued talking about the book. I continued marketing the book. Um, I want to talk about um, your YouTube channel a little bit. Yeah. You have over, I mean, at the time of this, you have over 72,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk about the folks on that. Yeah. And growing that. Yeah. It's, it, it was a, um, it's so funny because at the time of, uh, 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 like literally last night, I'd never look at this stuff. Um, but uh, that last night I just, I was in my email cause I just signed a contract or went under contract on like my first house purchase. Um, so I was looking for the, thanks. I was looking for that email, which was like the docu sign. I'm like, hold up. There's this thing from YouTube. Like, I wonder what that is. <laughs> and it's like the stats from last month. And there's two YouTube channels. There's the self publishing school podcast. There's the seven figure principle show, which is all about like kind of the operational principles of, of leading and, and growing a company. And, uh, and, and it was like the stats from, I'm like, oh my gosh, 19,000 minutes was the self, seven figure principles show. And then it was like the, 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 the self-publishing school chat has so like hundreds of thousands of views and minutes watched and all this. And it's just crazy. Talk about marketing asset, right? So that really came from I think video is my, one of my best me mediums. So it was, I mean, the lesson there, I think is stick to what you're good at. Um, or, or invest in what you're good at. And so we kind of take it, took a calculated approach to that. And then we do a lot of organic content. Um, so we've got, you know, selfpublishing.com. We've got self-publishing school. We've now acquired a few other companies. And if you Google anything about writing and publishing a book, you're going to land on one of our sites. Um, and so it was an approach to, to diversify in type of content. So if we can create a video on how to write a book, and then that video is embedded on our post that gets 1,500 views a day um, on how to write a book. Well, then now all of a sudden we can leverage that traffic here. But also for me, the goal was create a more lasting impression and better serve the reader. So, I mean, I've seen a bunch of blog posts that I don't remember. Like, oh, who was? I just, I don't remember what it was or, or who it was, but I remember the information, right? Whereas where I see a video, I remember the information and who taught it to me. So that was, that was, and is the goal um, with the YouTube channel, with the podcast and all that is, is creating a lasting impression with helpful content specific to what the searcher is looking for. Cause the search is how you have long, is how you create a long-term asset versus just, you know, videos that die on the vine and mm -hmm. don't get continuous views. So one of the ways to grow it, um, and I'm wondering if there's anything else you did to put fuel on it, but you know, doing the research and seeing what are people searching anyways, creating videos around that. So, you know, there's a, an audience for it. Yes. You know, it's like how to write a book. Well, yes. you know, if there's like 50,000 people are looking for that a month, you're going to show up. But is there anything yeah. else besides that that helped grow the channel? 
There's so many things. I mean, creating topical content on, on search, uh, on what people are searching. There was, we did a giveaway in the early days um, where it was like give away a Kindle or something and you enter to win by like subscribing to the channel, commenting on this video and doing different things. Um, so little things like that, but really focusing on what are our pillar pieces of content um, and how do we get those to rank? Similarly, um, I did a TEDx talk and then I kind of strategically picked the title of that talk was how to write a book in a weekend. Um, but I knew that I wanted to rank for how to write a book. And so when you search how to write a book on YouTube, I think that's like the second search result because the TED YouTube channel is so popular, right? And so I, I, I so that was the thought process there. And then self-publishing school and then myself are like the first comments <laughs> and, and that are like upvoted. So then now people can watch that YouTube video and kind of go into that ecosystem. So just Love like it. a bunch of little scrappy yep. things like that. Um, and then leveraging the content ecosystem and written content and embedding those videos. So there's more views, more subscribers, and kind of just like fueling that whole content ecosystem. There is, Chandler, there's two last questions I have before I get to those two questions. One of yep. them is I want to tell you what I didn't like about the book, but yes, the other yes. one is um, I would love to hear some of your favorite business books, but I love for you to just run me through a little bit about the milestones of the company because people see you now, you know, successful, growing, and there's a lot of blips and challenges throughout, right? Like you mentioned, yeah. most people wouldn't go, oh, he dropped out. Of you, you know, some of the things yeah. people may not know about you that got you to where you are. Yeah. Dropped out of school, started the company, uh, you know, in February of 2015, all of my bank accounts were negative, right? As we were launching the company, it was kind of like the burn the boats, put everything, all the chips in the middle of the table. Um, and then it, when we went from zero to $1.32 million that, that year, a year later, find out um, that my business partner is trying to kick me out of the business. Um, we go through mediation. I go through multiple six figures in debt, uh, borrow money from my parents' retirement to buy him out. So then it was like, okay, I've never been in six figures in debt and much less borrowing from my parents' retirement. There's no, failure is not an option. Uh, and then, you know, double down, paid that money off, scaled. We've been on the Inc. 5000 list. But I think the, the, the important point, like you said, is people will see the Forbes 30 under 30 or they'll see the Inc. 5000 or they'll see whatever else. And they'll think, oh, that must have been easy or they'll see the highlight reel. But there have been so many really, really, really difficult moments on that journey. Totally. Um, so what I didn't like about the book, okay? Yeah. I was mad at you, actually. I was, I was listening to the book. I'm in Costa Rica and we were on a family vacation and, and towards the end of the book, you tell this amazing story. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why the hell did you leave it at the end of the book? Like I wanted that at the front of the book, like yeah. you left one of the best parts of an entire book. Is it just so you like make sure people finish the book? I don't know, but I was like, he should have like, I wanted him to start with this yeah. part and it, it was at the end. So I'm, I love for you to tell a little bit of the story, but why yeah. put, why'd you, and I'm sure it was deliberate. Yeah. Why'd you put it at the end instead of like towards the front? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, not intentionally. Okay. Um, well, kind of intentionally it, it's the, it's the why get like, let's go do it this. It literally hit me in the face. Cry. That story yeah. when I read it hit me in the face and I, I can't, yeah. couldn't stop thinking of that story the whole trip. I mean, yeah. I still think about that story. Yeah. Gosh, maybe I should put it. Um, I, I, I've never wanted to feel like, uh, well, I, I've, I've, I've in some ways felt like it was, it's a downer of a way to start a talk or to start a book. Um, and and I, I've also never wanted to feel contrived or like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm using this story to yeah. get people to take action on. So I think that's why maybe subconsciously for me, it was like, okay, this feels like the right spot of like, okay, I gave the why and books changed lives in the beginning. And this is like, okay, you're about to put, the, put this book down and potentially never do anything with what I just taught you. And here's why you need to do it right now. Right. I wanted it in the beginning. So I, I don't know good. what good part feedback. of it you wanted yeah. to, to talk about. Yeah. But when I read it, I'm like, God, why did, it? you know, yeah. luckily I've read through the whole thing. You know, I mean, <laughs> I would have missed like yeah. one of the most powerful things about the entire book. I appreciate that. That's great yeah. feedback. So do you want to, do you want to 
give someone an inkling on what that is? No, or, no, no. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you have to get the book to read. What, I mean, it's just too powerful to try to sum you, up in six. Yeah, seconds, exactly. You know? If you, I don't know what page it's on, but um, you got to get the book. Go to publishbook.com slash Jeremy. And if that story doesn't make you think and doesn't resonate in your brain, um, you know, I'd be shocked. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but you'll know when you read the story in the book, you'll know exactly page what I'm talking 223 about. And it's chapter 26. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, like it put an impression on me, scared the hell out of me in so many different ways. So if you just get the book to read that one story, I, I recommend, it. I mean, obviously it's, there's amazing information here. So check it out in the book. Um, so last question, uh, Chandler, is I'd love to hear your favorite business books. You know, we're talking about publish. I love the title. Um, what are some of your favorites? Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of my top favorite of all time is, is Extreme Ownership, uh, Jocko. I mean, that's one of the best leadership books I've, I've ever read. Uh, and so that's, that, that is probably the most helpful. Um, also, 80-20 Sales and Marketing. Um, Perry Marshall. I mean, that is a gosh, unbelievable book. So those are a couple of the top two. And then third, I mean, this is I can often, listen to you for uh, the next five minutes, just rattle off. <laughs> I so can just keep going, keep going. I mean, I, I have four credits in my audible. So just keep going <laughs> there's until you hit one that I haven't read. So, so I'll go one and then I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna ask you to ask you a question. Yeah. Um and so what the next one I would say is you've almost definitely read this, but how to win friends and influence people. I mean, that is just a uh, one of the uh, that's on my reread every year or two totally um, list. And then here's a question for you, Jeremy, because I think this is how people should pick books, pick their next book. Is mm. what's one area of your life that you're looking to grow or you want to learn? Yeah. And then based on that answer, I'll recommend a book. Okay. So you're asking me. I'm asking that. you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think a big focus for me, um, this year has been more self-care and uh health related stuff um mm -hmm. so um sleeping specifically i'm terrible at mm. you know i got an aura ring this year yeah i did get i haven't read it looks long so if you have a better recommendation i'm up for it the uh walker i forgot which what the book was but he's like one of the biggest experts on sleep i think it's like eight hours on audible so if you have a oh, better wow. better one i am uh, I'm all ears Sleep Smarter by uh, Sean Stevenson. I read okay. that book back in the day. It's really good. It's okay. very practical tips to sleep smarter and get better sleep. Cool. What else? Give me a couple more business books that you like. Oh, man. Uh, any on your reread? Like you mentioned, How to Win Friends and Influence People is on your reread. Are there any others that are? So many. The Go-Giver is on the reread list. Mm -hmm. um, how, this is less known. Yeah, Bob Berg. To, yeah, yeah awesome. Bob Berg. Um, this is less known, but How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. Um, that is like, I couple that with how to win friends and influence people. And I've read those back to back probably at least three times in my life. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one. Kind of, I, I'm a big fan of going deep on a topic. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, from, at one point it was, all right, I need to focus. So then it was the one thing and essentialism back yeah. to back, yeah. <laughs> which are two great books on pretty much the same exact thing. We'll link those uh, so up. I, I, just, I like had both of those on the topically. podcast. Yeah, I'll link yeah. both of those up. Yeah. Yeah, those are those those guys are super, super sharp. Um, and so the, those are those are some really great books. And then outside of that, last one I would give is he's actually working with us right now to republish his book. Um, I think it's one of the best. It, it's called Extreme Revenue Growth. And it's one of the best books on growing revenue or scaling revenue growth that I've ever read. I mean, I've I've just been harassing him for years to publish an updated version. Um, <laughs> and Who so now it? he's, Who wrote he finally it? is, what's that? Who wrote it? Victor Who Chang. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, it's just a legendary book and I've had my whole team read it. I've had my leadership team read it a bunch of times. Like mm -hmm. it's so good. I love it. I'll have to check it out. Is it on audible? It is not. Oh my God. Hopefully it will be soon. Victor, if you're listening, put it on audible. <laughs> like, I want to, I would listen to it this weekend. <laughs> Talk to him He's about putting coming out with second edition. It's uh second edition. It's, and there's a whole story behind that, but this is, I mean, this is why what we do matters. It's I, multiple people recommended it. I said, Hey, I'm not reading it. It's got, you talked about this it. in the book. Yes. Yeah. You, okay. Yes. Yeah. Keep going. Yes. Yeah. That's the story. I said, I'm not reading it. It's got 12 reviews on Amazon. They said, you got to No, you need to read it. 
Um, and I read it and it was one of the best books. I, and, and I posted about it and I was like, hey, this is why what we do matters. And then wouldn't you know it, someone I knew, knew him and just tagged him in the post. I felt like an idiot, like ultimate foot in mouth moment. <laughs> um, and then, but it ended up full circle. He's like, yeah, cool. Uh, let's work together. Um, and, and I'll get your help on the second edition. And so I think it's finally coming out soon. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. Awesome. Chandler, fantastic. Everyone check out, um, go to publishbook.com slash Jeremy. Where else should we point people towards online? That's we have, uh, uh, I think I have self, forward slash Jeremy. Self yeah, that's the best. That's the first and best place to go. Yeah. So that like grab first 50 people will get a copy of the book. And then if you're interested in booking a call with my team to, to chat about working together, go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. Those are awesome. kind of probably the two best places. I love it. Thank you so much, Chandler. You rocked. Jeremy, thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.